Welcome back to the channel everyone. In today's video I am going to be reviewing the multi-function dual action airbrush set by Ovaga. And folks, this has what I'm calling a magic button. And if that magic button works as advertised, well this very well may be my new airbrush setup that I'm going to be using in the future. Before we get started, just a real quick disclaimer here. Ovaga did send me this airbrush set for free for my review. As I explained to them, my reviews are unbiased and honest. Folks, you trust me and I will not be losing that trust for any reason whatsoever. So I will be giving you the good and or the bad of this airbrush set. Because like many of you, I work a nine to five job too. And my budget for my hobbies are about yay big. So I want to do a review of products that I think might be helpful for us and see if they're worth spending our hard earned money on. So with that being said, Let's open up the box and see what is included in this multifunction dual action airbrush set. I also want to mention just one more thing before we get into this box and take a look about what uh, comes in this kit. And that is, if you're anything like me, you skip around videos, you don't watch the whole video, you find the parts you want and you keep on going and you go on to your next video, which is fine. Do that with this video. Find what you want to learn about, check it out, and move on. But... If you are interested in checking out this product, if you're interested in purchasing this product especially, make sure you at least skip to the end of this video. At the end of this video, I'm gonna tell you how you can get this product at a pretty substantial discount. Okay, let's open her up and see what all is included. All right, first off, we are greeted with an instruction manual. Next up is the air compressor itself nice weighty little unit and you'll notice there are two buttons on here well folks this is the on and off button and this is what i'm calling the magic button you see there's three little dots here these are three little lights this portable airbrush compressor has three different air pressure settings it has a low a medium and a high and according to the instructions it has 20 psi up to 32 psi it doesn't say what the center one is i'm hazarding a guess here that it's probably right around 26 psi and folks this is what i'm calling the magic button and if this works the way i'm hoping it works will be the reason why i'll be using this air compressor more often than any other air compressors that i have next up let's see what's in this little box okay it looks like we have our metal paint cup and what appears to be an airbrush or I have a feeling that probably attaches to the air compressor itself. What else is in here? Oh, nice. We have two more uh, larger paint cups that we can use. On to our large box, which I am sure is holding the airbrush itself. Let's see what all is in here. All right, well, here is our air hose. And it feels like a, almost like a silicone material. That's different. Oh, and it looks like our charging cable, and this is a USB-C, that's nice. Here is our airbrush itself, we'll take a closer look at that in just a moment. We have some cleaning brushes, it looks like some spare O-rings, and a little pipette. And, oh, it looks like they sent us a spare needle. That's kind of nice. Okay, and the last thing in this box are 11 bottles of airbrush paint. Here is everything that came in this kit. Again, your compressor, your airbrush, charging cable, cleaning supplies, air hose, the different sized paint cups, and 11 bottles of airbrush paint. I was just glancing at the product specs here in the user manual. I saw something that I find to be uh, quite interesting, and that is uh, Ovaga decided to use a 0.4 millimeter tip set in this airbrush instead of a 0.3 or a 0.35, which is pretty much standard across the board for most airbrushes that you pick up. I think that's really neat and a good idea because it's going to give you a little more forgiveness, especially if you are new to airbrushing and you're not quite used to thinning your paints just yet and you're not getting them just right you're gonna have a little more leeway with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. You pair this airbrush 
with their air compressor that has three um, pressure settings, well, they just hit it out of the park because you don't have your paints thin just right. You have your pressure setting. That's awesome. Good job, Avaga. Let's start off by taking a closer look uh, at the outside of this airbrush. First off, I may have mentioned it has some heft to it. It's got a little bit of weight to it. I actually have one of my uh, higher end airbrushes up here with me. It's uh, uh, this brand right here. And uh, it actually, this one weighs more than the higher end one. They're pretty close, but it's got a little more heft to it. Now, I like that personally. It doesn't feel chintzy. I like to feel that I have something in my hand when I'm airbrushing. So that is very nice. The body of this is nicely chromed out. It's, it's very slick, no burrs. And one thing I did notice that may not be a big deal for most people, but it's a pet peeve of mine. I have several entry level airbrushes and on every one of them, just turning them upside down, the paint cap falls off. This one doesn't. Ovaga took the time to put the proper O-ring on the paint cup to make sure that it seals and fits properly. Thank you. That is very nice. Now, speaking of the paint cup itself, if you can see inside the paint cup here, you'll notice that it is nice and polished. It's very clean, very shiny. That's going to help with two things. One, paint flow, and two, ease of clean. Another nice little touch that they did is keeping that cleaned up. On to the rest of the airbrush here. On the handle here, you have what is called a preset knob. Well, this is a preset handle, actually. And what that does, if you're new to airbrushing, is let's say you're spraying 100 widgets and you finally find that perfect spray pattern with the mixture of paint you're using. And let's say that spray pattern is almost three quarters of the way back. So you hold your trigger back and you turn this knob until the knob touches the trigger and gets a little push against it right there. And from that point forward, that trigger stops at that same exact location. So you're going to have the same exact spray pattern. That is a real nice feature on this airbrush. Let's begin this disassembly by removing the paint cup. We can have a look inside of the mixture chamber right there. And that looks nice and clean as well. Now let's take the handle off. Nice smooth threading on this so far. Comes off real nice. Next we're going to uh, loosen up the needle chucking nut here and pull the needle out. I'm just going to run the needle through my fingers backwards. I'm feeling for any burrs. No burrs. That's nice. Okay, now we are going to take out our needle guide slash spring guide assembly. And our trigger. Now let's take a look at the internals of the barrel of this body itself. And as hopefully you can see, it is nicely polished in there as well. What about the handle here? The handle I've noticed in a lot of um, beginner airbrushes, they don't take the time to clean them up very good, but not in this one. This one as well is actually polished. Wow, that's, uh, that's uh, very impressive actually. They took the time to do that. Let's take this needle and spring guide apart and check out the spring and the internals of it as well. First we take off our needle chucking nut. We slide this portion off and here is our spring. Very nice spring. And here is the inside of our needle guide. And I don't know if you can see that, but that is also polished. No burrs that I can feel. They really took the time to put this together nicely. Good job, Ovaga, on that. Now while I have this apart, there's one thing that I'm not super fond of for this style of airbrush. And that is the fact that our little pressure plate here that the trigger rides against to push against the spring guide that opens and closes our needle to allow paint and airflow is not attached. As you can see here, I took apart my other airbrush and this one is attached. It's not attached by anything more then just the ends are flared out a little bit. This can be removed if need be, but it is attached. Why is that important? Well, when you go to reassemble things like this, it's much easier to slide this back in like that than it's going to be to try to drop this in and get it uh, in there straight. We're going to do it and I'll show you how to do it though. Again, it's, it's nothing wrong with the airbrush. It's just a preference of mine. This still is a great looking airbrush so far. 
The first step to reassembling an airbrush is reinstalling the trigger. I don't know how well you can see it on the camera, but there is a slot in the center of this trigger. And that slot has to line up with the airbrush because the needle slides through that slot through the body of this airbrush. Actually, the needle is what holds the trigger in place. Getting the trigger reinstalled can be a bit tricky. You have this little part right here that depresses on the air piston. And it has uh, just a little itty bitty hole in the very bottom of the body of this that I don't think you can even see on the camera. But you'll know if you hit it just right because it'll push down and you'll feel a little springing action inside. Again, this is not an easy thing to do. I hardly ever get it the first time. I cut out a little bit there because it did take me a moment to get this installed. But as you can see, I have some spring back action, which means the trigger is installed properly. Now what we're going to do is we're going to hold this trigger forward so it doesn't fall out again. And this little part here, the part that goes against the trigger that actuates the entire spring guide, you don't want to drop it in from behind because it's just going to be almost impossible to get it in there lined up properly. And this curved portion of the little tab here, the outward curve, that's what goes against the back of the trigger itself. So what I do is I take a really nice little pair of tweezers and I get a hold of this. We bring it in from the top. We drop her in just like that. We're going to take a quick look at this end of the airbrush. First off, I'm going to remove my needle cap. And again, it's nicely polished. Now we're going to remove our nozzle cap and our fluid nozzle fell out okay this appears to be the style that the fluid nozzle is just pressed in some of them actually are screwed in some are pressed in like this it's just held in place by the uh, fluid nozzle again everything seems to be nice and clean no burrs nice and polished I'm impressed folks I'm not gonna lie about that but as they say, the proof is in the pudding. When we get this to working, then we'll see if all this prettiness actually works as well as it looks. On to the star of this kit, and that is the air compressor itself. This little button here that I'm calling the magic button is amazing. I have never seen a portable air compressor of this size that has three different air pressure settings. You have 11 different colors of airbrush paint. Now these are branded by Ovaga. I'm not sure if they are the manufacturer or not. I do know that these are water-based acrylic airbrush paints and they say they are ready to go right out of the bottle, which we will be testing here in just a moment. It's time to see if this portable airbrush system or set from Ovaga works as good as it looks. I'm going to use this green paint that came with this set. Normally I would filter my paints and I talk about that on almost every video that I shoot about how important it is to filter your paints. However, since this paint came with a set, now I know it was not sold specifically as a ready to go right out of the box set. It doesn't say anything like that. It's just, you know, an accessory to this set. You get some free paints. But I'm thinking, you know, if I'm a new person airbrushing and I buy this set, I may not realize that I have to thin the paint. I may not realize that I should filter the paints. I'm just going to pour it in and go. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to pour a little bit of this paint into our airbrush. We're going to do some lines, some dots, some circles, some just a little bit of everything. We're just going to run this airbrush through its paces and see how well it works. Okay, I'm going to zoom in here just a little bit now. Please forgive me. I have my camera set up so it's kind of in a way because I'm a left-handed person. <laughs> I'm going to try airbrushing right-handed. Let's turn this little compressor on and this is on its first setting, its lowest power setting. Those are pretty small dots. And again, this is a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. So as you can see, you can get still real fine Little dots. I am going to switch hands here and try to go left handed. Lines are no problems. Alright, let's crank her up to the second horsepower on this thing. Medium. And now high. Well, big difference. So hopefully you can see on the paper itself, this paintbrush works great. It works just fine as a paintbrush. You get some really nice um, wide spray patterns. They're nice and, yeah, it's nice and even. 
Now, other than this, I was going really slow here. That's why we had some runs. It's nothing to do with the airbrush. That was me. But, you know, you get really nice, small, tight dots, small um, lines. I mean, it, it works like an airbrush should work. It does not work like a cheap piece of junk. It works like a really nice airbrush. One thing I do want to check out, though, is I'm going to test these paints. I have a spare gondola from one of my 3D printing jobs. And I'll just throw some paint on it and see how well these paints will work on a plastic model. Now that the paint has had a chance to dry on this little coal car, let's take a closer look at it real quick. As you can see, it laid down very nicely and very evenly. There are no runs. For me, this paint in this kit seemed like it was going to be just a little perk, a little bonus. I did not expect this paint to work as well as it did, at least not on a plastic model such as this. I figured it would work decent on paper, but plastic is not an easy thing to paint in, re in uh, reality. So I, I'm, I'm impressed. The paint is, is good paint. Again, it is branded by Ovaga. I do not know if they are the manufacturer or if it's made um, by somebody else for them, but it seems to be relatively good paint. So nice bonus. Let's talk about this air compressor by Ovaga real quick. Other than the magic button, which I think is fantastic, I like the form factor, how they made this. I didn't show it earlier, I forgot, but this actually has little rubber feet on the bottom because this is made to sit on your table or workspace flat, like a regular little air compressor would sit. And it dampens the vibration very well. When I was painting, I was talking and this was running and I was talking in a normal voice and it was not terribly loud and that helps out quite a bit. I like this style of air compressor much better than this style. Now if you've been looking on Amazon for a portable air compressor you've probably seen hundreds of this style of air compressor and airbrush setup shown for sale. I bought this a long time ago. I did a review on it. It was decent. I bought it for the air compressor. The airbrush is but the air compressor is well was pretty daggone good but again it only has one pressure setting and as you can see hopefully the stinking paint cap just fell off the top as I talked about earlier in the video anyhow I don't like this style because it's sold to be used like this the airbrush attaches to the compressor now you can attach a hose in between which I do number one I don't like this because it's kind of heavy and it's kind of not I mean it's not terribly bad but it's not super fine controllable holding this honking thing in your hand and it vibrates. Who wants to be painting with something in their hand that's vibrating? I don't. So I always attach an air hose to this. Well guess what? This has no rubber feet. This has not this kind of form factor. This is made to be held not meant to be sat down. So guess what it does when I have it sitting down on the table? It vibrates like crazy. It dances around the table and it makes a heck of a noise. So no bueno. This Heck yeah. Love it. Now, the uh, star of the show for me, though, I mean, I was really thinking this was going to be it, and I kind of was in love with this little magic button, but this airbrush, this thing is over-the-top impressive. Don't hate me, but this is my $200 Iwata HPCS. This is almost as good, if not as good, as this. And I am not kidding. The fit and finish on this airbrush, it just amazed me. The internal finish on this airbrush is fantastic. Even on the, this one, which was decent, is not where near as nice as this one. The cap doesn't fall off. <laughs> That's a plus for me. But no, it just it feels good in the hand. As you saw, it even the four millimeter um, or point four millimeter, sorry, point four millimeter uh, tip set in here. It paints nice fine lines, it paints a nice spray pattern, and it is predictable. It, when I learned how to control it, I was getting the same size dot every single time. And it only took me a second to figure it out. 
but you know I've been airbrushing for quite a long time. But still, it worked flawlessly. The trigger is smooth. It is just, I mean, it feels identical to my expensive one, the trigger pull. I mean, it identical. I'm, I'm not kidding. Again, this for me was the star of the show. Unexpected, unexpected star of the show, but star of the show nonetheless. Other than me ooing and awing over this airbrush and air compressor, in all seriousness now, if this was around 35 years ago when I first started airbrushing, I probably still be using this today or something very similar to this. This is that good. I'm not kidding. Back then, you had a choice. You spent 20 to 40 dollars and you bought a piece of junk that usually had a plastic handle that the first time you used it, by just holding it, the threads would rip on it and it would fall out and it didn't spray well and you're constantly fighting with it. Or you spent literally hundreds of dollars to buy a professional grade airbrush. You know, when you're in high school, who can afford hundreds of dollars, right? If I would have had this at this price point, which we'll talk about in just a few minutes, I'd have been happy. I probably never would have moved on to the higher, more expensive ones because this works just that well. Let's talk about why I think it could be improved. And again, these are more preferences. There's not actually issues with the airbrush at all, as we saw, but something that I think would make it just that much better. As I showed earlier when we took the airbrush apart, um, this part that I took out of my Iwata, the little winged back section here that the trigger rides against, if that was attached to this part instead of being a separate piece, I think that'd be much better. It would make putting it together much easier, which I think that uh, somebody who's not used to taking an airbrush apart, some, a newer airbrush artist, would be more apt to take it apart and clean it more often, which is what you really want. You want to keep your airbrush clean to make it work uh, really well. Again, it's not a flaw, it's just a preference. The other thing that I didn't really like, the air hose. The, ch the choice of this air hose, this rubbery, um, latex type material, it's not bad, but a lot of us when we're airbrushing, we end up wrapping the air hose around our arms, kind of like this when we're airbrushing, and it just, I, I can see it potentially, you know, pulling a hair. I, it's not terribly comfortable. Um, I would rather, much rather see something like this. Uh, this is a braided air hose. I, I can't imagine it would cost much more to have one of these instead of this one. Uh, braided air hoses for me are the way to go. And one other thing that I want to mention, the paints. As we saw, the paints worked really well. Um, I did a little research on Amazon because that's where this is being sold and I cannot find the paints by themselves. They seem to only be sold in this kit. That's something maybe you should think about. Maybe you should uh, start selling these paints um, on their own. They're, they're good enough. I, I would definitely do it. Another thing too, maybe you should start selling this airbrush on its own. It's pretty dang gone good. But again, three little three little things and just personal preferences. Nothing wrong with the airbrush, just what I think would make it just almost perfect. So who do I think would benefit from owning this airbrush set? I think anybody would benefit actually. You know, of course, beginners. This is a fantastic way to get started in airbrushing. You have everything in this box. You have the compressor, you have the airbrush, you have the paint, you have everything. You can buy this box and start painting the same day. That's fantastic. Um, if you live in an apartment and you don't want to have a big noisy air compressor to annoy your neighbors, again, this is perfect. Even if you're in your own home and you don't want to annoy your wife by painting a model in a spare room, this is perfect. If like me, I have a camper, and when I go camping sometimes, I like to take a model with me to work on in the evening. This is perfect for that as well. I think anybody could find a good reason to own a portable airbrush set such as this. You know, the other one that I reviewed months ago, I really liked it. It was really good. But this one knocks that thing out of the park. It is a night and day difference. This is so much better, folks. I have held you in suspense long enough. This video is super long. I knew it would be. Now let me tell you how you can save some money. Right now, at the time of the release of this video, this Ovaga, let me show it to you one more time, this Ovaga airbrush set is being sold on Amazon and it is $79.99. But they're offering a $20 off coupon. I do not know how long that coupon's gonna be good for. 
I know it's good right now at the time of the release of this video. If you're watching this video a year from now, two years from now, if it's not still up, which I kind of doubt it will be, if it's not, I'm sorry. But as of right now, it's $20 off. That puts this down to $59.99. You are in the price range or below the price range of some of this, well, junk that doesn't have half of the accessories that this one has. The paints alone. If you guys have priced airbrush paints, they're not cheap, not good paint. So $20 off, that's an awesome deal right now. One more thing that I wanna mention that's very important. They told me when I was speaking with them about doing this video that they offer a one year warranty from the date of purchase against any manufactured defects. That may not seem important to you if you bought this off of Amazon because you know you can return almost anything to Amazon but Amazon has a limited return window and it's not a year. So in a year's time, if something were to break that shouldn't break, you contact Avaga and they said they'll replace it totally free of charge. That, you know, that's awesome. That tells me that this company stands behind their product, that they believe in it. That is, that, that's very important. So where can you get this multifunction dual action airbrush set? Well, Amazon, of course, I just mentioned that a few minutes ago. Weren't you paying attention? Nah. Folks, actually, there's going to be a link in the description below that takes you right to this item. So go check it out. Go pick one up for yourself. Go pick one up for your kid going to college. Go pick one up for your best friend. This thing, you're not going to be disappointed. I am super stoked. I'm so glad that they reached out to me and asked me to review this item. It's my new favorite toy. And with that, folks... Thank you for spending your time with me, and as always, God bless, and take care, everyone.